Hey guys, it's me, Kendra, and welcome back to my corner of the internet. February is a time to celebrate many things, and one of those things is love. So this February, to get you in the mood for some love, I decided to compile a list that'll make you feel all fuzzy wuzzy inside and get you in touch with your feelings. Let's get into this list. First, we have Dangers in My Heart, which is one of my favorite new romance animes it's about 13-year-old Ichikawa and Yamada. Ichikawa is like a little bit strange. He's very obsessed with death. And one of his classmates, Yamada, who's one of the most popular girls in his class. But as the series goes on, we see that he may be quiet, but he's actually not that strange. He's actually just a typical teenage boy who has a crush and we see them kind of come together and we see their quirks and differences and how they can kind of get past that and still fall in love. Ah, young love. Next, we have Watakoi. Watakoi is something that I watched during the pandemic and I fell in love with. It's about the characters Narumi and Hirotaka and actually two of their friends too as well. They all work in the same company and as Narumi is getting a tour of the company, she runs into Hirotaka who is one of her childhood friends. She kind of freaks out because she left her last company because they found out she was an otaku. And now she's worried that this company they're gonna find out as well, but as she comes to learn from Hiro Taka and her two other new friends, they all are different kinds of otaku and they all get along. It's just about them all falling in love. It's very, very cute. Next up is Lovely Complex, which is a teen romance. This is about Rissa and Astushi. Rissa is the tallest girl in the class and she kind of has trouble finding a boyfriend because everybody else is shorter than her and her rival or their frenemies, I guess you could say. Asushi is so much shorter than her, but somehow they end up falling in love anyway. It's romantic comedy, it's very good. I watched it when I was younger and I kind of recently went back and kind of like looked at the themes and it still holds up today. Next we have Loving Yamada Kun level 999. Yeah, about two characters, Akane and Yamada. Akane gets dumped by her boyfriend because he's playing this video game and he met some other girl in game and he dumped Akane for her. And while she's at this event for the game, because she's trying to show him that she's good without him, she runs into the handsome Yamada. And she's like, please pretend to be my boyfriend. He's like, eh, no. But they kept running into each other. It kind of seems like fate and it kind of shows them falling in love. Akane is very outspoken. She's a very people person and Yamada is not. He's kind of very reclusive very much a homebody playing video games but can still fall in love with each other and they're very sweet. Another one of my favorites which I really liked surprisingly even though it was the isekai it's I'm the villainous so I'm taming the final boss and we see this girl come into this world as Eileen. Eileen is the final boss in this game that she was playing. Well, not the final boss, but she was a villain in the game she was playing in her past life. And she's like, that's not the life I want. I'm going to get with the final boss, Claude. So it's about her adventures and trying to win over his heart because he's actually the final boss in the game. So it's actually a romantic comedy, lots of hijinks. And Claude is a delicious looking man. Mm -hmm. You like romance and you like Power Rangers put together? Well, then this next show is for you. Love After World Domination is about two teenagers, Destiny and Fudo. Destiny actually works for the villains in the show, right? She's one of the captains in the show. And Fudo is actually the Red Ranger in their team and they fall in love. And the gag is they actually know each other's secret identities and they don't care. They still love each other anyway. So it's kind of a lot of funny hijinks of them trying to go on dates or, or trying to flirt when they're on the battlefield without everybody else on their separate teams knowing. The little bit of action we get shown is actually pretty good. I just like people who are dramatic and those two are dramatic and they love each other so so much which i always love in a teen show when they can be loud about their love if you don't have a lot of time to be watching all these different shows well then 45 minutes of your day can be used 
like that watching love is a cocktail love is a cocktail is about office worker chisato when she's at work she's very stoic very serious but when she gets home her bartender husband Sora always has a drink waiting for it in her hand the episodes are about three minutes long and each episode has a recipe of the drink that Sora makes chisato when she comes home and that stoic girl at the office is completely different at home she's snuggling up to her husband getting drunk off the drinks that he makes her and eating up all the food that he cooks for her if you love fairy tales sugar apple fairy tale is for you it's woo. going into it i thought it was going to be like an easy girly pop fun time and while they do have those moments this is a very very serious show it follows Anne, who is on her way to becoming a sugar master basically somebody who can make sugar confection treats and they look so beautiful and dazzling and taste delicious. And on her way to the competition she has to go to, she buys a fairy because you can buy magical creatures in this world. She buys a fairy named Shell Fen Shell. I hope I'm saying that right. And it kind of goes on their journey of her trying to become a sugar master while they also fall in love. Shao does not play about Anne, and Anne does not play about Shao, and I love that too. They don't play about each other. You coming after one, the other one's coming up, like what's, what's going on? Tomo-chan is a girl, is another teen romantic comedy. It's about this girl Tomo, she's really rough, she's actually really, really good at karate, and her best friend Jun, they've been friends since they were little, but now that they're 16, Tomo has realized she has feelings for him, but the problem is, because they've been fighting each other since the time they were like six, Jun does not see her as a girl. So Tomo's getting the help from her two other friends, Misuzu and Carol, to try to help Jun see like, hey, I am a girl and I like you a lot. And it's just that journey of her kind of finding herself outside of being the karate butt kicking girl that she is and trying to find, I guess, uh, her more feminine side. If you don't like slow burns, I wouldn't recommend this, but if you do and you like comedy, definitely watch this next up is a comedy called uzaki chan wants to hang out about this girl named uzaki and this guy named sakurai uzaki just really wants sakurai to come out of his shell she likes teasing him making fun of him just hanging out over his place he tries to act like he doesn't like it but he really does this is a slow 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 burn okay there's three seasons out and only by the third season do we kind of see romantic feelings shaping up. So if you like a nice slow burn with some comedy, I would definitely recommend you watch it. Battles, adventures, boobs? Well then look no further than Undead Unluck. Undead Unluck is set in a world where people have these powers where they're able to negate things. They're called negators. First we have Andy who's undead and Fuko who's unluck. Fuko is the unluckiest girl around her. If you touch her, a streak of unluck will be coming your way and Andy is undead which means he really cannot die and they come together because Andy wants to die so bad and he's hoping with Fuko's unluck he will but Fuko states the more she likes a person the worse their unluck is so Andy's goal is to get Fuko to fall in love with him so that he could have the best death ever even with all of that there's a lot of battles in here a lot of world building but at the core of it it really does have those lovely hints of romance if you are somebody who typically likes action adventure shows but you kind of always want that romantic element that they're missing undead unluck has it next up is a show that i'm sure everybody knows by now i probably don't even have to describe what it's about Orin high host club we have Haruhi who walks into a room one day, breaks a vase, and now she's indebted to the members of the host club. She kind of has a relationship with each one. And as you're watching, you want to know which one she's gonna get with because she has like a little tiny romantic arc with each of them. My favorite one is Tamaki, of course. My love story is about Takio and Rinko. Takio is not considered conventionally attractive. He's big. He's buff and he's tan and people are kind of scared of him until he saves Sweet Rinko from an accident and they fall in love. It's an opposites attract story. And for the 14th, I'm actually going to choose two just because they're very, very new. They just started airing and that is A Sign of Affection and Hokkaido Gals are super adorable. A Sign of Affection is about Yuki who is deaf. 
She meets Itsumi, who goes to her college, and she's about them falling in love and how Itsumi is the definition of if he wanted to, he would. Because anything that he wants to do for Yuki, he absolutely does. No hesitation, no matter what anybody else says. He is in love with that girl and there's only three episodes to show. And this is just me as an anime only. I haven't even read the manga, but I already see how serious he is about her and I love that she's getting that. So the people in her life, you know, well, you see when you watch. And for 14B, Hokkaido gals are super adorable. When I tell you that Minami is the gal of all gals in all romance anime, she's literally the best. It's about Tsubasa who moves from Tokyo to Hokkaido. The first girl he meets is Minami and she's showing him the ropes of Hokkaido. They're very, very flirty. They're so, so cute. And they actually both have really good emotional development for 16 year olds that you really wouldn't expect. I'm ready to keep watching episodes. Like I said, I'm a manga reader, so I'm not gonna spoil it. I'm not gonna spoil it, but y'all, now, since we're talking romance, there's a group of girlies who know romance like the back of their hand, and that's the girlies at Amour Anime IRL. Phi, Nikki, Ki, and Paris are some of the premier romance girlies that I look to when it's time to be watching these shows. So of course I couldn't do a video without some of their romantic input. Get ready for some more Romance Rex. Hi, I'm Paris. Hi, I'm Phi. Hi, I'm Nikki. Hi, I'm Ki, and, and we, we are, are more anime, anime IRL. As certified anime lover girls, we know romance. So here's some extra anime rest. They'll make your heart feel all warm and fuzzy. I want to take the chance to talk about the ancient Nagasu Sprite. The story centers on a young girl named Chise Hatori who has the ability to see things that normal people can. As a result, her life has been pretty difficult until she meets a mage named Elias. The animation is beautiful, the characters are well written, the soundtrack is astounding and does a very good job at capturing the mystical vibe of the anime. I highly recommend it and I think you should check it out. The Duke of Death and his maid follows Victor, a duke who was banished at a very early age due to a curse that was placed on him. So his family sent him off to be alone because the curse causes anything that he touches to die. So he's living by himself with his butler Rob and his very flirtatious maid, Alice. And as time goes on, he starts to develop feelings for Alice. But it's really funny because you really can't tell if Alice is just like poking at him and, and picking at him or if she's developing feelings as well. This causes Victor to want to find a way to get rid of the curse. There's an element of mystery there. So now we're trying to figure out why the curse is placed on them in the first place and how do we get rid of this? And will Alice and Victor take their relationship to the next level? It's very cute, very quirky, very funny. Will definitely have you kicking and swinging your feet every now and then. And it's just a nice wholesome watch where they splash of like, hmm, what's going on here with this curse? Snow White with the red hair. It's a beautiful love, a little comedy to it. Life to life romance, manga and anime. I truly recommend to watch. Watching the two main characters chemistry build, it is like, ah, but. Watching Prince San and Ziriki's journey is truly amazing. Ziriki is a herbalist at her village with red, beautiful hair. Ran away from the prince that wants to marry her because of her hair. Bumps into Prince San in the forest, but ends up getting poisoned by the apple. It's a beautiful love chemistry that goes on from there. I'm not saying more. So let's talk close to your Prince Atlas, which follows Kutara, a poor straight-A student who gets hired on as a private tutor for a set of Prince Atlas. Ichika, Miku, Mino, Itsuki, and Yotsuba, which honestly starts out with them having no determination, no motivation, little self-confidence, and honestly starts off as a lost cause. If it doesn't seem complicated enough, there's also an underlying backstory, which leaves us, the audience, to try to figure out who was Futuro's first love and who will be his last. It's honestly a really good slice of life romance. Yes, it's a harem, but it's probably the most romantic harem that you'll ever watch. Adora Rex, wanna hear more? And talk romance? Then make sure you tune into our Twitter space every other Saturday where we discuss romance, slice of life, and fantasy. You can find us at a more anime IRL. And thanks to Kendra for giving us the chance to talk about what we know best. Love. Thanks again to the girls at a more anime IRL. Like they said, you can find them every other Saturday on Twitter X space at 3 p.m. CST. And you can follow them on Twitter for all the romantic wrecks, romantic moments, 
all the things romance, fantasy, and slice of life. You know, reminiscing about these racks makes me realize how single I truly am. <laughs> Hmm. So if you see me on the news kidnapping a tired blonde businessman, a 50-year-old firefighter with white hair and eye patch, and a super smart tenured professor who changes hair when he gets angry, um, instead of judging, how about you start a free her campaign, post my bail, and subscribe! Alright, bye!